All right, all right, all right. Welcome back, you glorious bastards and magnificent. It is I, Doc Camus, and we're back for another thought of the day. And today we're going to talk about the the Chauvin trial, because that's now over. Well, I'm not thinking of bail and such, but that's not the end of the I guess bronies are the new white supremacists and Nazis. We're going to go over that. Uh, Russia's flaunting its military, and... Um, a child's birthday has gone to shit, and I got to talk about that because I got to figure out where the people, what what's going on in people's heads because that garbage is garbage. Uh, you know, still fighting the beard life, a little bit about me. Um, doing my thing, getting better, trying to be better, trying to be leveling up every day, being a better man every day, trying to do my thing, trying to help, trying to do something about this, this circus we call life because uh, we all live in the same damn circus. With that being in mind, you know, only you can help us keep going and doing this. So it's like uh, the best way to support – there's a bunch of ways you can support us. You can please like, share, subscribe, do all that jazz on whatever platform that you de- get on. If you're on an audio platform, leaving a review helps, things like that. Share us on platforms we're not on, like Twitter and Facebook. Like do what you need to do to get us out there and help. Go to our website. Become a um, – uh, join the subscriber list. Uh, view everything directly from our website. Become a member. Contribute. Get exclusive content. Buy stuff on the merch tour. Everything helps keep the lights on here and improving everything for you. And as you can see, and that's some point, which is the first podcast we're focusing money into. We got that studio almost finished. And uh, we're, we're going to get a better few. And we're going to keep going, keep improving, keep leveling up. And that's all you can do with life. With that being said, let's get into the Chauvin trial. He's found guilty on all charges, which I think might be a little much. But we'll get into that. Let's get into this article first. Um, so this is uh, this article is from NPR, right? Derek Chauvin found guilty of George Floyd's murder. And there they am, like handcuffing him. Um, the jury has found former Minneapolis police officer Derek Chauvin guilty on all counts he faced over the death of George Floyd. The trial has been one of the most closely watched cases in recent memory, setting off a national reckoning on police violence, systemic racism, even before the trial commenced. Chauvin, 45, has been found guilty on unintentional second-degree murder, third-degree murder, and second-degree manslaughter. Uh, with all his eye, I, like, I, I, just, I don't think he woke up like third degree. I don't think he woke up that morning and was like, I want to kill a man. But he did like keep his head on his neck for too long. Manslaughter. So like at least he's going to prison, but that's a, like a death sentence for him. And I don't like how it was like, it may have capitulated to the riots, terrorism. And like, cause that's not justice and better tenant guilty men go free than when innocent. Like it's just, it is what it is with only his eyes visible as the rest of his face was hidden behind a surgical mask. Chauvin watched as the verdict was returned. Judge Peter Kale thanked the jury members for the heavy-duty jury service. Chauvin was reman- remanded into custody as the jury was dismissed, and Cahill said sentencing is expected in eight weeks. So he's going to get a sentence in eight weeks if he even makes it there. Uh, sent- State sentencing guidelines recommend 12.5 years in prison for a conviction on an intentional secondary murder for someone with no criminal history, but prosecutors could have, seek a sentence up to the maximum of 40 years on that count if Cahill determines they were aggravated factors. A deputy handcuffed Chauvin and escorted him to the side room. Fun times, huh? I mean... It's a death sentence either way. Like a, a, a police officer goes to prison. It's a good death sentence. Everybody's going to be gunning for him. Uh, George Floyd's brothers, Phil Onesy Floyd, hugged perse- prosecutor Jerry Blackwell, Minnesota Attorney General Keith Ellison, and others, according to the pool reports from a journalist in the courtroom, Ellison Blackwood shook hands. <laughs> I mean, it's hard to deny that the, the this trial might have been tainted by, like, Maxine Vlaude is saying the keep riot, the, the justifying the rioting and all the rioting and, like, it, and the the state given money before the trial even happened, which is pretty much admitting guilt. And like, it's just that the, this whole trial was a farce. Felonacy Floyd had been, I mean, do belongs in jail, but the whole trial was a farce. And, and the trial being a farce is the much more egregious crime here. Felonious Floyd had been seen praying in the courtroom, asked by a pool reporter afterward what he had been 
praying for. He answered it was just praying that he would find him guilty. As an African-American, we usually never get justice. There was no noticeable reaction from the jury. According to the pool report of the jurors, each remained still and quiet, staring at the judge until they were called upon to announce their judgment. The jury had been deliberated for about 10 hours over two days following closing arguments. Floyd's death on Memorial Day, damn, that's pretty damn quick. Floyd's death on Memorial Day 2020 sparked protests amid it across the United States and around the world. It promptly calls for police reform and soul searching on issues of racial injustice. Yeah, it did reverberate to other places in the world, which is retarded. Don't burn you down over our problems. Those are our problems that we have to face. And yes, we do have to face them because they are problems. Floyd was a 46-year-old black man from Houston who had moved into Minnesota three years earlier. He was a father and a brother who idolized his mother, loved making music, and had been a star athlete as a man. He was also on drugs. That was established, but that's neither here nor there. Floyd died after Chauvin pressed on his knee on Floyd's neck for nine minutes and 29 seconds as Floyd lay face down, handcuffs behind the back. Trial. This is about the trial. Uh, that was all public. I'm not going to go over most of what's going on. Here's his charges. He got charged, found guilty of unintentional second degree murder and defined as death causing without intent to do so while committing or attempting to commit felony offense. The maximum sentence for second degree murder is 40 years. Third degree murder is causing death to an individual by perpetrating an act of immensely dangerous to others and evidently deprived and evidencing a depraved mind without regard for human life. Yeah, see, that's a little much. But without the intent to cause death, well, without the intent to cause death. Mm, I guess you could kind of argue that, that he wasn't trying to kill him, but he, eight and a half minutes was egregiously ridiculous. So it carries a maximum sentence of 25 years. Secretary Manslaughter is causing the death of another by culpating negligence, creating an unreasonable risk in which the dead negligence. Yeah, so like... As kind of without intent to do that. So no, he might actually be um these all three charges, they 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 might stick. And these are the jury, we're not gonna go behind that. And it's beyond the courtroom, we're not gonna go any further into that. You can read the court documents, you can follow along like everyone else's has. But that's what's going on. Um there's gonna people some people are happy about it, some people aren't gonna be happy about it, and there's probably gonna be rioting anyway, because that's what the last couple of years has been, because it's not about this. This was just an excuse, I'm just saying. Moving right around, right along, uh, the next thing in the Twilight Zone in today's circuits we're going to talk about is apparently bronies are Nazis now. They're white supremacies. They have a white supremacist problem. Um, I mean, bronies have a mental health problem, I think, dressing up like little ponies or whatever. But to each their own. I mean, they have their own. I'm um, just like, you, you're, uh, it, it's weird to me. Um, but it's your thing. If that's your thing, that's your thing. That's who am I to tell you what your thing is? And that's how. That's all I'm going to say about that. But apparently they have a, uh, this huge white supremacy problem like everything else. Everything's whiteness. Let's check this out. Uh, the Atlantic, right? My Little Pony fans are ready to admit they have a Nazi problem. Uh, my Little Pony fans have had a Nazi problem for a long time. That sounds just as strange no matter how many times you say it. My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic, is a cartoon television show about friendship, compassion, and a group of magical horses with names such as Twilight Sparkle and Fluttershy, who, <laughs> who live in a fantastical land called Equestria. It's marketed to children. Now, nevertheless, it has an extremely dedicated adult fandom because people are crazy and humans are awesome like that, which is mostly made up of men or bronies as they've been referred to for many, nearly a decade. Most of these men are white. Some of these men are vocal white supremacists. I mean, I don't know if that's true. And pe the, these people like to twist and certain things. I, I mean, everything's white supremacy now, so you're going to have to like show me like real examples, or I'm just going to think that's utter garbage. Uh, the brony subculture is about a niche as they come, born in interest forums in the early 20s. Tens an era when hyper specific interests were organizing. I don't know why this is like this is ridiculous. Even so, bronies have long captured the world's attention. I think it's just because it's men. The world likes to hate on men. They hold well attended fan conventions. They've been the stars of multiple documentaries. If Atlas shrugged, you would all die. Men like do all the like like climb through all the nasty sewer pipes and like 
Many of the show's adult fans generally enjoy My Little Pony and the wholesome escapism it provides. Otherwise, however, delight in the irony of their fandom. To them, it's edgy and provocative to be an adult obsessed with cartoon ponies. It's fucking weird, but whatever. To each their own. That's where the Nazis come in. Okay, I guess... I guess so, whatever. Uh, My Little Pony fans primarily express their enthusiasm for the show by sharing their own cartoon drawings of the main characters, which they usually upload to image boards. The most popular of these sites is called Derpaburu, a combination of a character's name and a common term for image boards. Derpaburu hosts millions of My Little Pony artworks, plenty of which are simple tributes to magic, friendship, and the magical friendship. Magic, friendship, and magical friendship? Oh, my God. 2021. This is the news. But a substantial number of them are extremely jarring and violent. An image that I've recently viewed on the site depicts My Little Pony characters presiding over three lynchings and one beheading of cartoon drawn to represent various modulized groups. Derpaburu even lists racists as a searchable category. And more than 90,000 arts tagged as Jesus Christ. Maybe they do have a Nazi problem. <laughs> For years, this has been the status quo. Oh my god, what the fuck is going on in the world? This has been the status quo in the world of My Little Pony. I suppose reference to principles of free speech and openness on the instance the presence of self-described Nazis within a fandom that idolizes compassion-oriented cartoon characters has become a coolly accepted fact. The community has resorted itself largely into two camps, those who think anything goes as long as someone finds it funny, and those who would rather ignore toxic elements than admit that not everything is perfect. So do they have a fucking Nazi problem, or do, or, or are they just fucking men with imperfect imper- lives um, suffering through mental problems like the military and resorting to dark humor to pull it, pull you through that? Because there are differences, and you should probably identify that. Until now, following a new wave of Black Lives Matter protests across the United States, the fandom is an all-out civil war force to either confront or deny what it's let go on for so long. The abrupt reckoning has raised an essential question for internet spaces large and small. If you've gone online to live in a fantasy space, you can avoid taking responsibility when the real world finds its way in. This is ridiculous. Even quick glances at history of My Little Puff servers as a value template for how not to build an online community. The fandom was born on 4chan. Well, 4chan. There, you, there you go. It was on 4chan. The largest den of chaos and toxic beliefs available on the internet. In 2012, a message board called MLP was set up because My Little Pony conversation was taking up too much space on boards for TV and comics. It took off because there's nothing for chain legs better than things spiraling out of control. Derpa Buru, which was created that same year as an easy place for bronies to share, art hosts a wide range of little pony fandoms, including friendly and inclusive fans who do not feel any personal loyalty to the slur-ridden forms of 4chan, but the size that's still borrowed from the 4chan ethos by building itself as an archive in an absolute sense of the world. Everything would be allowed, nothing would be destroyed, the site's rules are respectful of copyright and other laws, but otherwise do not restrict the content of artwork. I mean, if it's if it can, doesn't break the law, it should be allowed. That's how free speech and expression works. It, whether you find it offensive or not. In fact, they've actively forbid complaining about content and instead instruct vi- visitors to use the site's filling tools to avoid images they don't want to see. I mean, that's just how it fucking works. Like, freedom works both ways. Everybody's free. I just... this. I can't believe this is we we we're, we're done with this. I can't believe this is the news. I would like to know if they actually these people are they really white supremacists or do they just have a dark humor thing? Because the army used to have fucking jokes about throwing painting baby walls with babies. And how many dead babies does it take to paint the wall? Like how many babies like you have to throw like do you have to throw in a wall to paint it red? things and stupid things when you're going through fucking extreme things your body does weird things people cry people laugh uncontrollably and they don't even realize it's them your body copes to extreme circumstances in weird fucking ways and a lot of people's kinks are because of like childhood trauma and stuff and that's their that it's that it's expressing it in weird ways <laughs> like who the fuck are we to like deny that so like before you go there calling people Nazis, you should actually determine if they are Nazis. And because of the nature of fucking what you say in this racist section, it, it, you have a, a 
logical reason to want it to be investigated, but you should actually wait till the investigation comes by and find.